According to witnesses, the girl was yanked off her bike and forced into a light blue late model Honda just before 7 o'clock last night. Witnesses also say the girl was kicking and screaming for her mom. Laniqua Haith was in her car and decided to chase the kidnapper. She screamed for him to let the girl go. He knew I was there, but he wasn't even trying to look at me. It was just like a plain look on his face. He didn't look worried or nothing. Laniqua lost him, but not before seeing the number four on his license plate. Shortly after, an Amber Alert was issued. It's part of California's new system to find kidnapped children. Flashing freeway signs were triggered, giving descriptions of the abductor and his car. Two hours later, the eight-year-old was dropped off in Knight's Landing, roughly 30 miles away from her home. While the girl's family says she appears unharmed, she remembers only the last words of her abductor. That guy told her, um, okay, I dropped you over here and uh, you're waiting over here for me. And I got to go phone call and call your mom and your dad come over, pick you up. Police say they are following leads, including a possible sighting of the kidnapper just hours before. I did talk to a woman this morning who uh, saw a car similar to that in, in another apartment complex. Investigators say they are thankful the girl was returned and credit that to the actions of the girl's neighbors. In West Sacramento, Elisa Becerra, KTVU, Channel 2 News. I opened the door and my God, it was just like burning like hell. It's just like in front of my face. Jovi Montavon says she ran out of the home she just moved into a week ago and was greeted by a shower of hot embers falling on her lawn. I was so terrified and panicked, I don't know what to do. Fourteen unoccupied homes right next to several occupied homes were destroyed, burned to their foundation or badly damaged. Basically what we had was uh, several homes that were lumber piles and once one started the others were right behind it. Investigators say several different fires were burning simultaneously, which leads them to believe the fires were intentionally set. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms is also investigating. We'll probably have a mobile laboratory out here. We already have an accelerant detection canine available who will start work tomorrow. Police say someone deliberately set a fire in this building on Taylor Street that killed an elderly woman, but they won't say why they believe that. For residents returning today, there is no answer, only the horrifying memory of what happened. I crossed between the fire, you see, and I, I, and I remember that lady, she's a nice lady. Leeway Flores breaks down every time she tries to talk about the fire that took the life of one of her neighbors and damaged the building that until yesterday was home. Leeway says her son called 911. You called the fire department as well? Yeah, yes. it was 911, but it, this, uh, five breaks, it didn't ring, it didn't answer. So my, my son just left the phone, just left it there and we, we crossed the fire here. You see, the fire was over us. Just after 2 a.m. yesterday morning, residents here woke up to thick smoke and flames and very little time to get out. We jump onto the um, scaffolding and I'm afraid of heights, so my boyfriend, he just pulled me down. He just, come on, come on, let's go. This is what's left of their second floor apartment. Blackened and charred walls, burned remnants of furniture, piles of ashes. It is in those ashes that Christina Middleton and her boyfriend are searching for any trace of their lives here. Just see little mementos, um, like our bat, just little tapes and pictures, just to see something that it was saved. That's all. I'm, I'm just happy that something was left. 74-year-old Nardo de Torres lost everything, including the money he was saving to go back to his native Philippines. My money and my, uh, like, my jewelry, yeah. and also all of my pants, uh, my, my jacket. At least 65 people living in this building are now forced to live somewhere else until repairs on the structure are complete. No one knows how long that could take. Out of 24 units, four were completely gutted. Nardo de Torres is left with a plastic bag and books and hopefully pictures of his late wife who passed a year ago. The name of the woman who died in this fire has not been released until someone from her family can be notified. Police aren't saying much about this case other than it's the work of an arsonist and it's still under investigation. Elisa Becerra for the 10 o'clock news.